Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, we'll be looking back at another disappointing result, this time at the hands of Brighton and Hove Albion, of course, at the Emirates, where we were held to a 1-1 draw, effectively ending our chances of reaching the Champions League via the top four. I honestly don't know what to say anymore. We've had so many opportunities to wrap up Champions League football via the league. You know, the teams around us have forever dropped points, have constantly given us a route back into the race and put us in the driving seat, effectively have said, here you go, guys. All you need to do is get a couple of simple results and it's yours. We don't want it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants to finish in the top four this season. And that makes it all the more frustrating. Now, people will argue that at the start of the season, nobody expected Arsenal to be in the top four. And I accept that. But as I've said on previous shows, your objectives throughout the season will change depending on the situation and the circumstances around you. And we were in a prime position to finish in the top four. We have blown it. This is all our own doing and it's not good enough. And it's for a number of reasons. I'm not going to sit here and say it's just Unai Emery's fault or it's just the players' fault. It's a combination of both. It is a combination of both of those things that has left us now sitting here relying on winning a Europa League title to get ourselves back in the Champions League. Now, yes, it will be great to win a European trophy. Of course it would. But the Europa League is a cup competition at the end of the day. Anything can happen. Would you be confident if we did make it through to the final that we would beat Chelsea, for example, in a one-off fixture? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be confident. I would hate to go all the way to Baku to watch us lose to Chelsea and be denied the Champions League place. That would absolutely kill me. I mean, can't we just go down the road to Wembley if that's the way it's going to be? If we're going to have to face Chelsea, at least if we do get beat, it's not such a long way home. Right, I'm going to try and dissect what happened yesterday at the Emirates. Let's start with the uh, starting eleven, as we always do. Bern Leno in goal. Um... Stefan Lichtsteiner came into the side at right back. Mustafi and Socrates uh, partnered up in the centre of our defence with Nacho Monreal at left back. Ahead of them, you had Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira. And ahead of those two, we had Henrik Mkhitaryan and Mesut Ozil with Aubameyang and Lacazette leading the line. Now, I couldn't quite understand when I saw the team what it was that Unai Emery was trying to do. I thought that when I saw it on paper... It might have been Aubameyang or Lacazette operating from one flank, Mkhitaryan operating from the other, and then Ozil in the hole in behind the strikers. But that wasn't the case, was it? Um, To be honest, it it was all over the shop and I couldn't quite work out what we were doing. It was almost as though we were playing a four... 2-2-2 2-2-2 and for me that's far too narrow and leaves your fullbacks far too exposed now the game started and f- for me Arsenal um, were playing at a pedestrian pace the atmosphere in the ground was flat and I know I always complain about our supporters but the atmosphere was flat it wasn't as though um, you know Spurs had slipped up the day before and we were in with a hunt of closing the gap on them and putting some real real pressure on them uh, going into the final week of the season there was no buzz there Manchester United had also dropped points as well before we kicked off so there should have been lots of anticipation lots of excitement lots of buzz around the place and that just wasn't there it was flat flat as a pancake and I can't for the life of me understand why as I've already said the game started we were playing at pedestrian pace We were fortunate to be awarded a penalty, in my opinion. I've seen it back a number of times. The contact was minimal. Um, I think Anthony Taylor's fallen for Nacho Monreal's tumble there. And, you know, for me, had that been given the other way, I'd been absolutely furious. We were handed an opportunity to take the lead. And and in fairness to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, he stepped up and, and took the chance. And it begs the question, doesn't it? Why couldn't he take a penalty like that at Spurs all those months ago? But anyway, that's another point. I think after that, Arsenal just switched off again. And we turned back to playing this slow and, you know, uninspiring football. And for me, we had a real problem on our flanks, particularly on the right-hand side where Stefan Lichtsteiner was playing. Now, I don't think anybody questions the fact that Stefan Lichtsteiner in his day at Juventus was a solid right-back. 
But the man is over the hill. Let's be honest. Stefan Lichsteiner has seen better days. His, his best days are behind him. And he hasn't got the legs anymore to do what Unai Emery wanted yesterday. And that is to play it right back, to get back and defend alongside your centre-backs, but also to be able to offer Arsenal width in the attacking area. At his age, he cannot do that. He just can't do that. And for me, when I look at the team again, I probably think you'd have been better off maybe going with Shkobran Mustafi at right back and you know either moving Nacho Monreal into centre-back and starting Kalasinac on the left or bringing Koscielny in. I accept that Lauren Koscielny's had lots of fitness problems and maybe playing him twice in a week is too much for him. I get that. In which case, Nacho Monreal could have slotted in at centre-back. And if I'm being completely honest, when we're talking about Nacho Monreal, given that he's slowed down a bit, that he's lost that that yard of pace and, and that bit of fitness and sharpness, he's probably better off playing in that position. That position of centre-half probably suits Nacho Monreal more now. And, and so for me, I think it was a huge risk playing Stefan Lichsteiner. I think in the first half in particular, we saw him struggle to cope. We saw him struggle to cope with getting forward um, to, to get in those positions. And when you do get the ball and your legs are gone and you're knackered, your delivery is going to be poor, inevitably. Tired minds, tired legs, that's what happens. But when he was back defending or trying to get back defending... It was a real problem for us because Solly March, who had pulled out to that left-hand side for Brighton, and him and Bissouma were drifting out to that side and causing us all sorts of problems. They were throwing crosses into the box, looking for Glenn Murray all the time. And for me, that was an issue that needed addressing. It wasn't addressed. And I think, you know, if you look back at at Brighton's goal, where, where the penalty came from, it was because... Mikitarin had carried the ball forward. Mikitarin had switched over to that side at that point. He'd carried the ball forward. He tried to to lay it off to Lichsteiner. The poor was a pass one. Uh, uh, the poor was a pass one. The pass was a poor one, I should say. And there was no right back. Nobody could get back. And then you have a situation where your whole team is stretched. Granit Xhaka's having to come across from midfield to deal with that, and he shouldn't be. But my God, what an absolute moment of stupidity that was. To raise your, to put your arm out on him, to touch the guy like that was completely idiotic. And I've defended Granit Xhaka throughout this season. And I've spoken about him being important to our midfield. And I, I stick by those comments. But what I will say is, you know, you can't keep defending someone that forever lets you down. And for me, that was the final straw with Granit Xhaka because... This has happened time and time again. Moments of madness. Moments of stupidity. He seems arrogant to me. He seems like he doesn't give a shit. Like he feels as though he's already made it. Well, you haven't made it, Granite. Because you're not performing to a high enough standard on a consistent basis. And he might be better than some of the other shit that we have at the club. But that doesn't make you good enough to wear an Arsenal shirt. That doesn't make you good enough to be a guaranteed starter in this team. Unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. Brighton didn't look like scoring. You handed them a lifeline. We couldn't break them down afterwards. And as a result, our top four position has disappeared. It's faded. So, of course, I'm upset with Granit Xhaka. I'm upset with a number of players yesterday. I felt Aubameyang could have taken a couple of opportunities um, that came his way in the second half, and he didn't. And that's proved costly as well. But to sit here and say that Brighton at home is the reason we're not going to make the top four is silly. It would be naive of me because it's not just that, is it? The whole picture has been a shit show for weeks now. It all started with that game against Crystal Palace. We had it in our hands. I've said this time and time again. I'm going to say it again. Unai Emery has got it wrong in this past month. And people will say Unai Emery's not the problem, but he has got things wrong in the last month, contradicting themselves. Unai Emery, for me, is just as responsible for this lapse in form, for this, uh, you know, meltdown that we've had that has ultimately now cost us a position in the top four. He's just as responsible as the group of players that he's putting out there every week. Managers are accountable for results. That's the way football works. That's how it is. You can't sit here and still blame Arsene Wenger for our troubles. Yes, some of the players shouldn't be at the club. But has Unai Emery improved them? No. Has he brought them on tactically? No. Are we more solid as a result of his pragmatism? No. So to sit here and say that Unai Emery is not 
at all to blame for this is is wrong and you're blind and you've got an agenda not me because is he totally to blame no he's not the only problem but he certainly has to shoulder some of the responsibility as any manager in football does team doesn't get results managers are accountable that's the way it works if you go to work and you're managing a team and they don't perform you're accountable that's how it works that's how the world works Let's move on to Unai Emery's substitutions. And yes, at times this season, his substitutions have impacted games in a positive way. And for that, he deserves credit. And I've given him credit when that has happened. But the substitutions he made against Brighton, that triple substitution, completely baffled me. Arsenal were on top at that point. That was the only part in the game where you felt that a goal was coming The crowd were up on their feet. They were right behind the team. The momentum was there. Brighton were up against the ropes. We won a series of corners. We were knocking on the door. And then Unai Emery makes a triple change. He brings on a left back, Ser Kolasinac. He brings on Mr. No-End product himself, Alex Iwobi. And he brings on Matteo Genduzzi. Now, I don't think that Granit Xhaka had a good game. I think Granit Xhaka was shit yesterday. He was. But he's got more chance of picking out a pass over the top or smashing one in from 40 yards than Matteo Guendouzi has. So how? what was the benefit of making that change? I, I don't understand. Alex Iwobi came on, done what he always does. Pops up in the wide areas, gets the ball under control, hesitates, doesn't deliver, doesn't do anything, cuts back inside, plays the easy pass. And then you're bringing on a left back. Now, lots of you as Arsenal fans throughout the season have disagreed with me when I say that Eddie Nketiah isn't ready to play for Arsenal. You all say, oh, you know, how's he going to get get ready if he doesn't get a chance? What's the point in having him and not giving him a chance? Well, yesterday, when you need a goal, you've only got one striker on the bench. Bring him on then. Bring on Eddie Nketiah. Well, you've brought on three players that are never going to score you a goal. And you leave the only striker that we have on the bench. Not only have you disrupted the momentum... By making those triple changes. But the changes don't even make sense. Now if you can't see. That Unai Emery has made a mistake there. Then I'm sorry. But you're watching something else. I'm not saying he should be sacked for that. I'm not saying he's the only reason. That we couldn't beat Brighton. But to not get any more than one point. From Palace. Wolves. Leicester. And now Brighton is totally not acceptable. And Arsenal have been completely mismanaged. In the most important part of our season. Now, if we go on and win the Europa League and we get ourselves back in the Champions League, Unai Emery has met his objective. And fair enough, it's Champions League qualification. I'll be the first person to say, job done. Unai Emery's done what he was brought in to do. But does that mean that I have to like his style, that I have to agree with all his decisions, that I have to put my neck on the line and say this is the right man to take this club forward no it absolutely does not because I don't feel that way I don't feel that Unai Emery is the man for the future at Arsenal you can sit there and say oh but he's he hasn't got his own players yet he needs to bring his own players in this club ain't gonna back him to to completely overhaul the squad they're gonna let him bring in a few players But then if he brings in a few players, he needs them to be able to get the maximum out of the ones we've already got. And I agree that a lot of them are not good enough. They're surplus to requirements. They're not the right players. They've not got the fight, the desire. But they're not all as bad as what we're seeing right now. There are certain players in there that you can get more out of. And this manager has failed to do that. If we don't win the Europa League, then you have to say he's failed this season. You have to say that. And I don't care what your expectations were at the start of the season. The fact is we had a top four place in our hands. We've been given countless opportunities to wrap it up and we have failed. Therefore, Unai Emery has failed. The players have failed. We failed as a club. It's not down to Granit Xhaka. It's not down to Shkodran Mustafi. It's not down to Aubameyang. It's not down to Ozil. It's not down to... to to the players or one player or the owner or anything. It's a combination of shit. And Unai Emery's made plenty of mistakes this season. Just just say it. Just admit it. 
Why is it such a taboo subject? Because we wanted Arsene Wenger out. I wanted Arsene Wenger out too. But that doesn't mean that I can't see when Unai Emery makes a mistake. And it doesn't mean we shouldn't highlight them. We're fans. We pay our money. That's what I was hearing last season. We're fans of this club. We're entitled to our opinion. Well, I'm entitled to my opinion now on the current manager. And from what I've seen, he is not the man to take us forward. I might be wrong. You might be wrong. But at this point in time, I have not seen enough improvement in this Arsenal side to suggest that if I was Stan Kroenke, I'd be giving this guy a lot of money in the summer to go and spend. Let's not forget he did bring six players in. Yes, we weren't shopping at the top of the market. But let's not forget that he's got a better goalkeeper in between the sticks than what Arsene Wenger had in his final season. He's got a better centre-half in Socrates than what Arsene Wenger had. He's got a better defensive midfielder in his side than what Arsene Wenger had. He's had the benefit of having Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang for an entire season and his goals and everything that comes with that. So, in conclusion, you know, I am ranting about this entire season. I'm not ranting about just the Brighton game, just yesterday's game. I'm not saying Unai Emery is the only problem at Arsenal, but he's one of them. He's one of them. He's made mistakes. He's got things wrong. If he gets us back into the Champions League, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll give him another season and I'll get off his back for a little while. But I'll still highlight when I think that things are wrong. And I think that he's got lots wrong in this most pivotal part of our season. And for that, he deserves criticism. Right, that brings me to the end of this uh, episode or rant, whatever you want to call it. I uh, had to get all of that off my chest. And I must admit, I feel a little bit better. It's a little bit therapeutic, isn't it? Um, sort of letting loose on Arsenal and all our current problems. Um, I will be doing another bonus podcast uh, coming out tomorrow uh, where we'll be joined by a very well-known journalist uh, to help us dissect and to get his thoughts on the whole situation just to make sure that, you know, the opinion we're putting across is not too uh, one-sided. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that as well. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Whatever you need to do, you know the drill by now. Don't forget this show is sponsored by The Last Man Standing with Loserpool.com. And as I said, we'll be back tomorrow with another bonus podcast. <laughs>